Once upon a time, there was a land that was happy and prosperous. It had a great education system, safe streets, and jobs for everyone. There were a few poor people and a few rich people. Most were in the middle. The people of this land paid for their good life by investing in their future together. They called this paying taxes. Everyone paid what they could afford. The poor people paid a little, the people in the middle paid a middling amount, and the rich people, 1% of everyone, paid more than the others. Just about everyone thought that this was best. But over time, rich people decided they weren't rich enough, so they came up with ways to get richer. The first way was through tax cuts. They didn't mind if this meant fewer services for everyone. They said, why should I care about other non-rich people? I can hire teachers, safety, waste disposal people to work for me for less money than taxes cost. And then I can keep the rest of my taxes for me. The second way rich people got richer was through tax loopholes. These are laws that allow people to avoid paying taxes, with the idea that it's beneficial for other people, too, if this group didn't pay. The third way rich people got richer was to pay no taxes at all. This is called tax evasion. Of course, if all the people did this, everything would fall apart. But rich people and giant companies they owned figured no one would notice. This is illegal, but many did it anyway. And so it went. In 20 years, rich people doubled their share of the land's income. Schools, public safety, the roads, parks, libraries, public transportation, all went into decline. The rich people didn't care. They said everyone gets what they deserve. And they bought their own teachers, police, garbage collectors, and transportation. They also bought something else, elections. They spent so much money on politics, they elected people who liked what they liked. More tax cuts for the rich in big businesses and fewer schools, road repairs, police, firefighters, and nurses for everyone else. When the 99% became upset, the rich people and their politicians said, there is no other way. They repeated this so often many people believed them. Meanwhile, instead of investing in things that most people could use, and instead of providing jobs that paid people well like they used to, rich people found they could make more money on Wall Street. Wall Street is a place where money makes money. Here, the 1% made money so fast that they devoted more and more money to it. They took some of that money and sent it far away, where workers had no rights to produce things that workers used to produce here. When ordinary people wondered why rich people needed so much money, the 1% said, don't worry. This is good for you, too, because it will trickle down from us to you. Someday you'll be rich, and then the rules we made for us will be your rules, too. Some people weren't so sure about this, so the rich people bought newspapers and TV and radio stations and Internet companies and paid them to repeat over and over, Someday you will be rich, too. There is no alternative. Soon you could hear people saying, There is no other way. Someday we'll be rich. Meanwhile, the rich people's money piled higher and higher. But after a while, it was piled too high. One day, the money fell down with a big crash. It fell down right on the houses of millions of ordinary people. It broke their houses. Then more money towers fell down. They fell on ordinary people's jobs. This is terrible. Everyone was scared. How did this happen? The government said, we have to fix this. They were so used to rich people being rich, they immediately started printing money and giving it to rich people. But they didn't give any to the ordinary people whose houses and jobs were broken by the crash. Those people said, you keep the rich people money to replace their money that got lost in the crash? Why aren't you giving us any to fix our houses and our jobs? They got broken in the crash, too. The government had no answer. Now the people got mad. Since they weren't sure who to be madder at, the government or rich people, they got mad at both. Rich people got worried. They thought, if the people get mad enough at us, they might take some of our money. This really upset the rich people, because they loved their money more than anything in the whole world. So they devised a plan. They called it, look over there! Whenever people said, how come you rich people are getting richer, while all the rest of us are losing our houses, our jobs, and our schools, the rich people pointed at someone else and said, look over there! First, they pointed at the people whose houses were broken and said, Look over there! Poor people caused the crash. They built their houses in the wrong place. 
they hadn't done that, the money wouldn't have fallen on them. But most people didn't believe them. So the rich people pointed at someone else this time, teachers. They said, look over there. Teachers have jobs and you don't. No one can ever fire them. And lots of teachers are bad. The schools are failing. Teachers are the reason. Bad teachers. Bad, bad teachers. Most people didn't believe this. They remembered the problem was the crash, not bad teachers. The rich people realized it might be safer for them if someone else pointed their fingers. So they took some of their money, and even though it was just a little bit of their money, it was a lot of money since they had so much. They helped more people get elected. These politicians pointed their fingers at police, firefighters, librarians, and other public employees. They said, look over there. These people are greedy. They have jobs and you don't. You don't have retirement plans and they do. They caused the crash. Some people thought this might be true. They knew someone or something had caused the money to fall. Maybe it was the firefighters. But others remembered that firefighters helped them when their houses were on fire. They also remembered it was the 1% who built the money towers that crashed on their houses and jobs. Some people even remembered those towers of money had replaced factories and jobs that people used to have. And those jobs used to have retirement plans, too. And the ordinary people remembered that the teachers and firefighters lived in their neighborhoods and shopped in the same stores and didn't seem to be the problem at all. The people looked around. They saw too many students in their classrooms. They saw their roads filling with holes. They saw when they needed help, it took longer to arrive. People began to say, maybe rich people have too much money now. And maybe our problems have something to do with the 1% not paying their fair share of taxes. And also, maybe rich people should pay the same rate of taxes they used to when our land was prosperous and more people were better off. The rich people heard these things and grew worried. They told their politicians to pass laws to prevent people from organizing, prevent people from voting, prevent people from having retirement plans. But now the people understood the problem. It was rich people who crashed the money onto their houses and jobs. It was the 1% who got politicians to cut their taxes until there wasn't enough for schools, safe streets, libraries, health care, and parks. And it was rich people blaming everyone but themselves for what had happened. This is where we are now. And we have a question. Is there no alternative? Or can the people of this land do something to live happily ever after.